Obviously. I don't know why we even tap these. Do you have notes on yours, though? I don't have notes on my head. Welcome back to the Seeker Strength News Bulletin. And we're back with some news this week, obviously, for the Department of Dissemination of Insemination of Appropriate Information. Insemination of Knowledge. We've got a, a lot of different... We've got a lot of weight from this week. We've got some Robert Forst man, the Scheichlisch. And we've got Nate Diaz. The Scheichlisch. Smoking a, a, a doobie, a blunt, marijuana, uh, the devil's cabbage. Uh, yeah. Uh, dope in front of the... A USADO official, so it's all going on. Got Tomal Ardina, Toshiki pressing weights. Yeah. It's all very exciting. It's a strange time in sports, isn't it? It is a funny time. Nothing's happening. Mm-hmm. It's a bold strategy, though, you know, from yeah. from the sport of worlds, you know, the world sports. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this first piece, just to let you know before we go any further, it's a bit of a kind of tender topic for Gurf, so just be gentle with him, because it's like explaining to like a child that maybe the Easter bunny isn't actually a bunny that comes to your house um, and that it's something else, you know, because it's, it's this kind of mythical thing. Ilya does this to Owen every so often where he thinks he's making a comeback and Owen gets all excited um, and he's titillated and running around the place for a few days. Uh, but it's another false horizon or false dawn. Ilya's back snatching 140 in his black Romaleos and his white knee wrappy things. Now, I think it's significant that they're black Romaleos. So let's have a look. <laughs> With now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, that looked kind of not amazing. You're like, it's still 140, but he's done 203 from the floor. But there's a couple of things in our favor here. First of all, Ilya has gotten a hair transplant. Now, there can only mean one thing. This can mean that Ilya wants to take a load of gear again, but he doesn't want to lose his hair. We're not sure. We've had an argument back and forth that is, can you still lose hair that gets transplanted? And I think the answer is no. I think the answer is yes. If anyone knows, if anyone's got a hair transplant and you've lost your hair after taking gear, I'd be very, very interested yeah. to know. If you want to be an anonymous source, we won't reveal our sources. So if you want to tell us uh, in private, and we'll, we'll bring the story to the people, you let us know. So this one 40, but we've got Polish training pants. Black Romeo is not, not Look. Volt, not, let me finish, let me finish, not blue, not Volt coloured, but Black Romeo's. These are probably the ones he won in London. He's <laughs> launching his weightlifting academy mm -hmm. and he wants big numbers. And mm -hmm. everybody knows if you're launching a weightlifting academy online, you've got to be doing big time, big baby numbers. Mm -hmm. And 140 is getting there. And everyone wants this to be what it is, you know. And I know you don't want this. I know I, you're here. I want this more than anyone. It's the greatest no, no, no. weightlifter of all time. This is like when I say clock off. Isn't that yeah. a great weightlifter? Yeah. There you are. You don't have to. Shh, let's watch it again. So I'm gonna. <laughs> One more time. Here we go. Yes. Did that look like a Max Ella soft floor? That's not a big deal. Uh, to tell you how excited Owen is about this, that he's been listening to bring Sally up randomly throughout the days and work for the last week. Get it right. Just the, flower, the song is called Flower by Moby. Okay, nobody knows that. Uh, just to, to get that little tingle in his brain because this lift is, is on to the... or is to this music. But I think what we're going to see is we, we won't even see him getting back to the numbers he got to when he was training mm. in Qatar. Yeah. I think this is going to be... He might get to 155 or something. Um... On a serious note, I assume he's just doing some lifting yeah. to launch his weightlifting academy. It'd be yeah. very interesting to see what his weightlifting academy is like. I uh, it's it's hard to know really what mm -hmm. what it'll be. If it'll even be him coaching, if it'll be different people, you know, is it open to English speakers? Or I know his English is quite good, but is it good enough to coach people? So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And if anyone does get coached by him, I'll be very interested to see. Yeah, interesting that he's doing this at all. Like, why yes. is he not going through the Kazakhstan system? Because we know they still have a lot of good weightlifters. Is there? Is it a desire for a business venture? I, this is what it kind of strikes as for me is like he's setting up something to make a bit of cash for himself, you know. See, I would have thought he's setting up something for himself to do something as opposed to looking for cash. Oh. See, I feel like he's sorted with cash. Yeah, big time baller money. Like he's head of like Crazy Lord's hockey arena rink, yes. ice rink. Yeah. So... I mean, I think this is just a hobby. I think what this isn't mm -hmm. is some sort of dalliance into elite sport where he wants to have his own weightlifting team. 
I don't think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be amateurs buying programs or amateurs getting coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's crazy though. He is crazy, yeah. Moving that's on. why he's so good. Moving on to uh, still elite weightlifters, but not yet right now. Still drastically underperforming. We've lose Ajun. Honestly, just missing in one tenth. So the first one was a miss. I think we can all agree on that one. <laughs> yeah, Lou is just literally missing one ten. So he makes it by the end. He does that thing where he holds it and drops it early. Now they're flippant with misses. Flippant. We've seen the Chinese national team. It's like a a hallmark of theirs. They'll drop underneath the bar and hold it for a second, then drop it, and everyone will laugh. Yeah, I think it's a terrible way of training. But mm-hmm. he's some of these are flat out misses. The first one is 100% a miss. So I think this might be the first one again. Like, this is just straight up a miss. Like, yeah. that's, no, that's that was a miss. So that's the one where he does three holes and drops at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's a really bad example because loads of amateur weightlifters have tried to do it. And it ends up them just missing snatches yeah. like that. That one was just a miss, though. Yeah. That was straight up. Just no, a miss. as somebody who's missed 110 <laughs> uh, many, many times and tried to play it off as if I was just going for a double or something. Uh, I can tell you that they're missed. <laughs> they're straight up misses. Uh, the first time I snatched 110, I missed it 13 times and I made it on the 14th. There's videos of all of those on uh, on the YouTube. You know, so as someone who's also missed 110 a few times, mm-hmm. I can confirm that that does smell of a 110 miss. Yeah. Uh, so no doubt. This is like he's probably best muscle snatch of all time, 110. Yes. So the comeback continues and I'm rooting for him. Yeah. Thankfully, people are encouraging him in the comments saying he'll get there. Uh, the journey you don't see in the highlight <laughs> videos, respect for making this public. He'll get there. Such humility <laughs> posting the show in the process. This is more of what we need. Moving on to unrelated performance announcing drug news. Nate Diaz put up a video of him smoking a blunt marijuana in front of a USADA employee. Now, this drives me mental. From which, whose side? Oh, this drives me mental from the side of Nate Diaz is an idiot. It is I, kind of funny. No, I, I hate everything about it. What do you hate about it? Um, There's like five things I hate about it. Go for him. That's what we're here. First thing is. Yeah, yeah. He signs, so like he fights the DRC. You sign a contract saying, I'm going to get tested in my own home. These people are going to come to my own home and wait there until I give a sample. The guy is co- like, here, I don't give... I can't, could not care less about drug testing. I don't care. I don't. I, I did nothing of this is what, to do with, with drugs, right? But this guy's just coming into his house doing his job and has to sit there while this stoner and his stoner brothers and the stoner idiots he hang around with are smoking weed in front of him. The guy is just sitting there trying not to get videoed and coughing as he's kind of like standing up and moving around the room. As I said previously, Nate agreed that he'll have someone come into his house. So nobody's banging down his door and demanding that he has to be there. You know, if he doesn't want to fight, he doesn't have to be there. The other thing as well is that, like, in my opinion, smoking weed constantly as an athlete is a terrible idea. And I get it. He's an extremely accomplished athlete. um, But extremely accomplished athletes do dumb things, too. The other fact that you're using something that was previously banned and because of dumb people like you did to remove the ban. Uh, I just, everything about this makes me mad. I I, I think it's kind of funny. It doesn't really bother me. I think it's uh, it's funny. I don't know why he's doing it though because obviously the there is still limits on the amount of THC they can test for in your system. It was very low before. Funny story actually. Uh, a couple of years ago, the last positive test in weightlifting Ireland were two beginners it was their first competition there were two friends and i don't know them but i know the story and they both tested positive for marriage marijuana they'd smoked like the day before the night before or something they both tested positive and incredibly this was when the tolerance was super low or the limit of detection was very very low so they were well within that and so it's funny from the outside but any positive test in a federation in any kind of western country is always seen with huge amounts of scrutiny so it took a lot of explaining and a lot of groveling from weightlifting Ireland's perspective to explain what actually happened so it's uh, that was back when the tolerance or the limit was really low uh, it's been moved such that you'd literally want to be doing that. I don't even know if this would still make you test positive you can still test positive for THC but it's very very hard for you you'd probably want to be using edibles or something before mm-hmm. you actually get to this limit so realistically in this scenario he is uh is he's probably fine and uh you know no nah. fuck you sada like I, oh i'm all for like that paulo i'm costa. all for that like but um paulo costa got cut off last week he was on the clip in youtube 
Thought conveniently removed it. Yeah. No. That was in last week's news show, but mm-hmm. this just strikes me mental. Um, no, no, it mostly is. because stoners doing sports drives me mental. But uh, it's uh, it's certainly unprofessional in regards <laughs> to Nate Diaz aside, and it's probably fairly silly. But I assume it could be a marketing kind of thing as well. He obviously knew this would go quite far. Like I mean, we're literally talking about it right now. Yeah. So it's uh, I I think it's funny. I can see the funny side of it. But I'm in a terrible mood today as well. Yeah, it's which fair. Really, this doesn't help with. It's just uh, it is quite disrespectful. Now, one thing that I don't like about it is kind of disrespectful to your man because that I don't think the guy tests. they're blowing smoke at him. Yeah, and I, he's coughing. I don't think that guy looks like someone who smokes a lot of weed. Yeah, uh, I don't think. I uh, like he looks like he's just trying to do his job and collect piss. No, I've seen anyone working for what is a terrible person, you know. And I yeah. assume they were never. Yeah, 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 yeah. I assume they never achieved anything in sport themselves. But bought that aside, you shouldn't be blowing, you know, drugs into someone else's no. face. No matter how terrible. It's unfortunate that he's in a room full of cage fighters. Yeah, like, and, you know, obviously he himself never achieved anything in sport, and that's why he's doing that job. But anyway, moving on, we have Ro- someone who has achieved a few yeah. things in sports. Robert Forrest Temann, I'm not sure you actually say that in uh, in German, is... Quadzilla. Th- he's doing what he is doing. My God. I don't think he, I think he cycles anymore. I don't think they're all old videos. <laughs> I'd say he cycles, all right? 280. 280 honestly it's perfect <laughs> it's, it's exceptionally perfect. good everything about his squat is perfect everything this wrist angle is yeah. great the angle at which his elbow sits is perfect nicely Hips coming back out. but like, knee, knees going oh. forward everything moving knees and ass yeah. moving in sync with each other back dozen rounds for some reason his ass is huge but he still has no butt wink yeah he's wearing his cycling singlet which no no uh, everything about this is it adds to it for some reason I don't even oh. know he's got um some old school raps on. His ass is enormous. It's just so thick. What is he at though? Like this is. Uh, I was asking people. I put this out on Instagram. And mm. I asked some people. I was like, "What? How good is Roberts in terms of at cycling? So, you know, like what if he was like a weightlifter or something? So he's won some medals. Not a lot at individual, but he's certainly an elite level cyclist. You know, uh, he's probably his best isn't good enough to win stuff in the elite mm-hmm. level individuals anymore he's won a couple of theme things I think he's doing some stuff with the Paralympics as in I think there's an assisted thing someone was describing to me but I don't know if he's I assume he's still competing by himself he's still putting up a lot of cycling stuff uh, as we talked about before not really for the new show but uh, he's like dragged to power coefficient is widely off for his power to rate ratio mm. both of these you know being too large for some things and too heavy uh, for the initial speed off the block so apparently it's perfectly fine because he just wants to be yeah, as powerful as massively initially. high gearing but the uh, the squats no less are amazing and I think he's is he still a strength shop athlete I think so he looks quite short yeah as in like oh my god that squat's amazing it's unbelievable yeah I'd love to know what his best is I'd love it's surely 315 you know sometimes on the subject of USADA and stuff you know like mm. sometimes people make the mistake of thinking they're kind of like oh uh, like you know Germany be like a clean country and stuff but clearly not you know I just obviously not you know no every time I see him squat I'm impressed it's always impressive I love everything about it yeah so you post this a few days ago I like the long socks mm-hmm. I like the super upright torso it's just so so nice I don't know what he could really squat even if he went full time strength training like also football. sorry yeah in immaculate shape immaculate shape yeah shredded absolutely shredded we'll just find a quick thing of him yeah he was just cycling topless in his singlet which is an incredible flex or he's on a, a watt bike oh my god but I don't know what he could possibly squat if he stops cycling I don't think I think I don't think cycling is in any way affecting his squat it seems like he's not prioritising like I'd, I'd love to know 320 maybe it's very hard to know his body weight as well mm. it's very very hard to judge it with the size of his ass <laughs> moving on we have two great very popular weightlifters strict pressing so we've Tomo Lordina strict pressing 72 kilos and then we have Toshiki just hitting 113 kilo strict press very clean in fairness from yeah. both of them Toshiki but he's in a very strange lockout yeah yeah it's bizarre it's honestly his biggest problem from weightlifting and I don't think it's something I think it's an anatomical thing I think it's an issue with I think it is anatomical yeah just the way his shoulders sit on his back you know yeah however, like they seem to sit very far back mm-hmm. uh, or a super kind of protracted scapula 
It's yeah. very strange, you know. Yeah, it's 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 super strange. There's so much of his lats and his armpit exposed yeah. in the overhead position, and it doesn't seem to be a position where he's exposing it like that. He's huge amounts of wrist flexion as well to compensate for this, you know, because the amount of yeah. how far the barbell is behind in relation to where his shoulder is, you know, he's not able to get the barbell super far behind his head with a straight wrist by the looks of this. If he looks like he straightened out his wrist, that would be beyond his ears, you know. And I don't think this is an upper body mass thing that's restricting him. It looks to be just uh, just to be how he's built, you know. And yeah. Not that he can't lift big weights as we've seen him do, but it certainly inhibits him a little bit. Looks quite uncomfortable overhead as well. And all barbells are uncomfortable overhead. <laughs> and then we've got Thomas. Thomas trick press is nice. Tom obviously is quite limmy. Yes. Quite long, you know. That's very nice though. She has the opposite overhead position then, yeah. so something incredibly straight position. Very wide grip for the strict press. We don't see a lot of heavy strict presses from elite female lifters. We've never really seen them. I don't really know what the upper limit is or what the average upper limit for an elite level athlete would be, or elite level strength female athlete. You know, for example, we saw the female CrossFit Games two years ago or three years ago like something like there was in the 60s Thomas in 72 Tatiana Karashina is rumoured to clean jerk 210 so we're imagining is she strict pressing 100 kilos you know we don't it's a very interesting she thing. must be if anyone knows the biggest strict press by a female of any sport an actual strict press I'd be very interested to know because we don't even see it from a lot of female powerlifters we don't see them pressing no. very very heavy or routinely so it'd be very very interested to see it was actually a conversation we were having before we started recording this. I mm-hmm. have no idea. No, no idea. No concept, really. Yeah. Uh, Toshiki, obviously on the gun- gunning for Paris 2024. Uh, hopefully, we'll be at Paris. Mm-hmm. It's only the year after next. You know, an adventure wagon. The year after next. Yeah. That's mental. Yeah. So, if anyone knows where we can get an exact replica of the mystery machine from Scooby Doo. Uh, we're going to have one of those traveling over from Ireland. Or a DeLorean. Or a DeLorean, yeah. Yeah, something like It'd be difficult like that. to sleep in a DeLorean, though. Slept in smaller and worse. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed the new show. If there's any major we missed out, let us know. If you're like, oh, can't believe the lads didn't report on that because we could have easily have missed it. And if you would like to subscribe to the Mormon service, um, which actually, they're actually out on the street across. Yeah. They have a stand. I'm going to go over and ask, can I join? No, you should be like, any luck today, lads? Just yeah, like, how's your day going? I've gotten fuck all. Already did this street, lads. No, no, be like, come up, be like, hard days, and I've got fuck all converted. I've tried the wife things, but it doesn't seem to work. Uh, can you swear in the Mormon church? Probably not. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs>